We finally got Dell's new 2020 XPS 13 in, and I have to say that it's almost perfect. In general, I only have two main complaints, which I'll cover in just a bit. Dell has been on a roll lately, listening to reviewers and improving issues we complained about. We really liked last year's XPS 2 and one and I have to say that this might just be better. You might think this one looks identical, but there's actually a surprising amount of differences, so if you want to see a detailed comparison between the two, make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications enabled. In this review, we're going to look at basically everything from build quality, performance, speakers, display quality, and much more. But first, a huge thanks to Intel and Micro Center for providing us with this Dell XPS. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics, from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build a PC. They also have a huge variety of desktops, laptops, and all of the accessories that you need. Not only that, but they also have highly trained staff and low prices. Check out a local Micro Center today to get your hands on a variety of products before purchasing, or use the link below to view the 2020 Dell XPS at microcenter.com. One of the biggest improvements is the 10 nanometer i7 Ice Lake processor and new graphics which makes huge leaps from the 2019 XPS. The main benefit is that it's much more efficient, so you're getting more performance while using less power and staying cooler than before. Our model packs the 4-core 1.5 GHz 10 nanometer processor paired with G7 graphics, as well as 16 GB of ultra-fast 3733 MHz RAM and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD storage. But before we get into the really impressive performance benchmarks, let's talk about the things that Dell has improved. First off, even though the last XPS 13 was super thin, light, and compact, Dell managed to make it even thinner and lighter. Build quality is better than it's ever been since they're using more metal, which results in a really rigid chassis that feels premium, and you can tell that it's solid aluminum by looking at the sides of the laptop around the ports, whereas it used to be plastic with thin aluminum covers. On the bottom, Dell has added extra vents on the sides, and they've also redesigned some of the air vents so they aren't as easily blocked anymore. One of our complaints last year was the hinge being too stiff, but Dell has fixed it, and it's now a one-handed open. On the inside, Dell chose to cover it with their high-quality carbon fiber composite finish which protects from fingerprints, and it actually feels really nice on your palm. Now looking at the display, you can see why this laptop is so compact. Not only are the bezels incredibly thin all around, but the display is using a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, just like the 2-in-1, which adds more vertical space, which is really helpful on a 13-inch display. This was done by removing the Dell logo on the bottom, which I think makes for a very clean look. You may remember older XPS 13s had a webcam by the keyboard, which made conferencing look awkward. Moving the webcam to the top in 2019 fixed the angle, but at the same time, we lost the Windows Hello that made logging in so quick. This year, we have it all. A fingerprint sensor built into the power button, a proper webcam angle, and Windows Hello support that we love. Thanks, Dell. As far as the mic and webcam quality, it's about average. Display quality itself is exceptional. Our model has higher than 4K resolution and great color accuracy, and now 500 nits of brightness, which is really helpful in bright environments and sets this laptop apart from many others. The keyboard is no longer recessed into the casing and basically covers the full width of the laptop and it now looks incredibly clean. The keys themselves are now wider with less space between them, so they're easier to accurately type on, and they're now clickier as well, but with less key travel. Overall, the keyboard is well above average, and most people will be happy with it. The trackpad is also an improvement over last year's model, being slightly larger and easier to click, making this one of the better trackpads available in Windows laptops. Speakers have been one of our major complaints with Dell laptops, but just like with other things, they've been listening. Last year's XPS 13 had only 1 watt speakers, the new 2-in-1 doubled that to 2 watts each, and this XPS gets 2.5 watts per speaker. It's still not as loud as the Surface Laptop 3, but at this point, they are loud enough and the sound quality is above average, being better than the Surface. When I saw that this thing got slimmer, I immediately figured that the SSD would be soldered, 
just like the 2-in-1, but I was thrilled to see that it's user replaceable, which is impressive in a laptop so small. If you choose to pay $50 extra, you get 512 gigs like we did, and I definitely would suggest it, since this isn't a low budget SSD. Ours got about 2600 megabytes per second read and 2200 megabytes per second write. It's also packing some killer wireless specs, like Bluetooth 5 and top the line Wi Fi 6. Reception is a bit worse than the Surface Laptop 3 in the toughest part of my basement, but still much better than the new MacBook Air, which lacks Wi Fi 6. As for ports, we got a micro SD card slot and two full speed Thunderbolt 3 ports like the 2 in 1, but we no longer have that extra standard USB C port like last year. Now let's get into performance benchmarks where we'll compare our i7 to last year's i7. In Geekbench 5 CPU test, we're seeing about 30% higher scores compared to last year, which is especially impressive since we know it's more efficient than before. When pushing the new XPS to its limits in Cinebench R20, it scored over 40% higher than the previous best 2GHz i7. As for the graphics, it's even more impressive. We went from 5700 to 10,420, which is over 80% faster graphics performance. Since much more apps are now using graphics acceleration, this can really help out. Now this definitely isn't a gaming laptop, but in Firestrike, the G7 graphics destroyed last year's UHD graphics, so you should be able to get away with some light gaming. Finally, the battery life. Expect 9 to 10 hours of real world mixed use if you get the 1080p model, but if you do have the 4K screen like we do, it's more like 5 to 6 hours, which can be a bummer. The 4K screen is gorgeous though, which makes it a tough choice. Personally, I wish Dell went the way of Microsoft and Apple and stopped making us choose and just gave us a resolution somewhere in between which can offer both good battery life and a nice viewing experience. My second complaint is the prices. At the time of this video, the standard XPS 13 costs more than the XPS 2 and 1 and more than some of the competition. But I know that Dell usually runs discounts after a bit, so once the price is lower, I would have no hesitation recommending this laptop. The performance is excellent, the build quality is top notch, the keyboard and trackpad are good, speakers are now above average, we now have Windows Hello, and an easily swappable SSD and battery for future proofing. Honestly, even if it costs a bit more if you need a top notch Windows Ultrabook, this one is almost perfect. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to tap that like button and click the circle above so you can see us compare it to a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.